Sure, it'll be fine. Remember, COVID, COVID hair, no one cares. Okay, ready? Okay. We hope our lighting is a little better. Hi! Oh, hello. Oh. Oh, hush. Now. <clears throat> okay. So, <laughs> so, as you can tell, <clears throat> such a... Apparently, she thinks uh, the, the few people who might be joining us in, uh, fairly soon might might show up at the house too. I guess. Of course, we're also running late. Uh, so while we are while we are getting started this evening for our kind of late June cocktail of the month, um, we're going to uh, we're going to take a minute and see how our lighting is. We, we've been told also that uh, people take a little time to gather and show up, especially since we're not always exactly on time. So. And tonight we weren't. So, well, we're close. Ish. We're, we're still in the same time zone. That's true. So we're going to, what, what's going on? Okay, so we're going to uh, play around. Holy smokes. Wow. Okay, so. <laughs> Live <Ms>. Facebook, everybody. <clears throat> so Miss Mercy does not get to play with any of the glasses tonight, apparently. Well, we got this new lighting thing, and I'm. Well. I don't really know how it works, but we're going. Oh, it is much better. Okay, we're hearing that it's much better, so we're going to believe it because it's the person that bought us. Thanks. Yeah, who, who said we looked like what was it, vampires? I don't remember. No, I don't either. Probably right. not. So All right. anyway, we're waiting for the uh, the small tribe to gather. Are we? I don't know. It could be as many as two people watching. Maybe it's seven. So, it's hard to tell. So the weather today has been fairly unfriendly to my hair, which has had opportunity to really grow since the whole uh, COVID stuff. Um, and one of the things that we're going to talk about while we're waiting for a minute is this fun little mini bar that Eric got when he went to Tennessee recently for a, a workshop. At the Living Free in Tennessee 2020 workshop. I went down to uh, learn about canning. I went down to learn about uh, installation of a solar water, uh, hot water heater system, uh, which is really pretty cool um and a lot of other things really uh financial i mean it's it's a fantastic seminar it's well worth the money nicole sauce if you're watching this it was i had an excellent time and i i really uh connected with a lot of really interesting and, and very smart people and i was really happy to do that so anyhow one of the things that one of those very smart and creative people made was a mini bar mini bar and as you can see it's got little bitty jars of alcohol and fun things to mix them with i just thought this was a very clever idea it also had a bag of peanuts but i ate that on the way home he's not wrong so so we've got to and then things to to mix them with so like this is a this vanilla is a, a lady melissa white was her, her idea very clever one. vanilla and coke cherry coke so just we thought that was a fun little thing that happened there so we thought we would share that while we wait but i think probably we'll go ahead and get ready okay i think uh, if, we, they, if they aren't watching by now they can walk, catch in later you're not wrong so um our drink of the month we're playing a little bit of catch up this is june's drink of the month somehow uh, i don't i'm not exactly completely sure but june is gone now and it's actually july 1st well, if you're it, not it, quite it, sure about the it, day it was my birthday month oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, and so we did actually do um i had a very small get together with just a few people because you know wanted to uh on my actual birthday and we did make boat drinks but we did not film it because sometimes what happens at your birthday stays at your birthday wow no no mm -hmm. too much mm -hmm. anyway and then uh recently my my uh no nope, nobody knows okay We're anyway good. Anyway, we had uh, so we just got busy, and uh, here we are. Okay. So, why don't you talk about one of our first drinks? Oh, okay. Um, we were planning last month on doing a kind of a one-off specialty edition, uh, which was uh, what we call uh, boat drinks. Oh, but it's gotten rolled into tonight. It, Yay! Yes. Okay. So basically, for those who are not uh, familiar, the Mad Farmer is, is quite the Jimmy Buffett fan. Uh, I started listening to Jimmy back in the uh, late '70s early 80s for kind of when he first came on the scene I had a uh, a boss of mine who was a big fan who kind of turned me on to him and, and I've listened ever since I think I've got 54 of his albums so he's uh, the second biggest concert tour uh, moneymaker in in uh, the country and if you're not familiar with Jimmy Buffett well all I can say is you better YouTube him up but uh, and right now he's doing Margaritaville uh, live uh, repeat tours so if you go to his, his youtube channel you can go uh you can go watch live concerts that he did last year so 
Uh, anyway, <clears throat> to make a long story longer, uh, at the time, many, many years ago, um, back when I was like, I think, 32, 33, uh, friends and family got together and threw a surprise birthday party for me, uh, knowing I was a huge Buffett fan at the time. He was on a uh, Corona tour, which is actually where this shirt comes from. It has nothing to do with the virus. This is a Jimmy Buffett shirt. <laughs> so, uh, and they used to have a Jimmy Buffett party pack. Uh, Corona sponsored it, and they had all kinds of flags and flyers and posters and and uh, trivia stuff and just basically everything you needed to throw a luau. Sorry, my foot got stuck under the table. <clears throat> oh gosh. You, okay. I'm a mess. You you are, but Sorry. I love you anyway. I appreciate that. All right. So anyway, they they uh, it was a secret to me. I really wasn't seeing to see it coming, and uh, they they created. Uh, he has a song called Fins, and so they put cardboard fins on my fence posts. They and, don't need the whole story. Oh. Kind of, kind of, anyway. All right, so you don't need the whole story, but I came home to a Margaritaville-themed yard. Uh, there was a kiddie pool full of beer, um, and then it turned out that they had actually called down to Margaritaville in Key West, which was the first Margaritaville, and gotten the recipe for uh, what they call boat drinks. Um, now, their boat drinks were um, sized for apparently six gallons at a time, uh, which they tried to translate down to a slightly lesser uh, drink. It... Uh, it did not really translate down well at that time. Uh, I think we had a great party. Nobody really remembers it, but it seemed like we all really enjoyed it the next day. So, 45 minutes. Yeah. Well, you're trying to keep me under the story? Okay. <laughs> it, anyway, so to, to make a long story longer again, so over the years, because of the, the quantity of alcohol and, and the aging process that uh, some of the party participants have gone through, uh, I've, we toned the recipe down. We uh, basically played around with the ingredients. It took me probably about 10 or 15 years to kind of really get it right where we're dialed in where we want it. And now I actually have a recipe that uh, we can consistently reproduce. And it's actually uh, I've got the alcohol content just low enough that you can actually make popsicles out of it. Um, and it freezes quite nicely. So if you're, you're having a lovely summer day and would like a little kick in your popsicles, you, you can Good do Good stuff. Okay. So. Um, basically, the uh, because it was kind of, I'll, I'll just give you the basic ingredients and we'll go ahead and post when we post this up on our website at tinysustainablelife.com. We'll go ahead and put the uh, actual recipe so you can reproduce it and uh, hopefully I won't get sued by Bacardi because most of it's in there. But uh, recipe is basically you uh, get a frozen, well, oh, let's go get a can of shawl. Doing a little song and dance. Okay. Well, Dan. Anyway, I don't know if you can still get these anymore. I still I bought a whole bunch of them. These are Ricardi uh, Pina Colada mix, frozen. Whoops. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. Right it just you couldn't see the Pina Colada part. Sorry. Oh. I did think you spilled, but you didn't. Okay, good. Sorry. Anyway, so this is the basis for the recipe. So you take, uh, you get a blender and you take one can of frozen Pina Colada mix here and you put that into the blender and then you take a half a can of frozen orange juice concentrate and you put that into the blender and then you take this can and use it as a measuring cup. And so you fill it half full of Bacardi 151 uh, light rum. And then the other half is uh, you fill it with either uh, the original recipe I made is a coconut rum. So like uh, Malibu is an excellent choice. Uh, you can put a spiced rum like Captain Morgan's, but we're not as big a fan of that. Or Sailor Jerry's. I, okay. Um, you can also make this recipe without the coconut for people who don't like coconut. Right, Aaron? So. Hey, there's Jenny Hill. Oh, hi, Jenny Hill. How are you? Well, that, that's a long distance. Viewer. That is right. a long distance. Viewer. So um, basically you put that in. You also then put in a can of pineapple juice. You put in about a half a can of pineapple chunks. Uh, and then you fill the blender up with ice and you blend that. And then you basically turn into a lovely, lovely summer drink. Now you won't want to drink more and more for probably about two, uh, two or three of them. If you drink too much more than that, citrus kind of starts to get to your stomach, especially on hot days. So it's a lovely, refreshing drink. You can make it without the alcohol. It makes an excellent uh, breakfast drink for kids, or you can you can do it without the alcohol for people who don't drink. Yes. And so basically, it's kind of similar to if you're, I don't know if you're familiar with an Orange Julius, but it has a similar taste, but with a tropical coconut flair. No yeah. eggs. No eggs. Absolutely no eggs are in it. So Bacardi doesn't make 151 anymore. Oh, they don't. We, we knew that. Okay. Well, when, and so when we, we use um, the cruise 
something. Well, that's something. What, what is this? We use a different 151. Okay, but if for those of you who want, if you wanted to, you can make it lighter and just use their regular light room. Yeah. I forgot that people set them on fire, themselves on fire again yeah. or someplace they don't know how to drink properly. Yeah. Well, so. Or, or clean. Okay. So anyway, um, <clears throat> so you want me to go make make them up while you go ahead and talk about yours or or i think that that is a still at the popsicles those sound amazing janet they are amazing it's true yeah. super yummy yep. um so he is actually because there's a blender involved he's going to go mix that now i'm going to talk about our second drink of the month because this is a twofer since we are a little bit behind but um yay happy birthday month father's for day. eric father's day it was a father's day birthday extravaganza so got to see the kids, which is always fun. I, I actually uh, have two two older daughters who don't live here, which is great. Mm -hmm. I love them very much, but it's wonderful to have their own lives. And do you want to show them your birthday present? I, I can. I, I, if, if it'll fit. Well, I, I actually was gifted a couple of really cool things, uh, a couple of chairs for our new dock deck, but mm -hmm. I will go show my brother. <clears throat> Renaissance, dude. <laughs> it's actually really cool. Actually got me a land. Okay, you can see. I know. Got me a land shark uh, surfboard for my pub shack or interior. We think we're probably going to put it in in our travel room, which is here. And land shark is Jimmy Buffett's beer. So. Or I can stand on the street corner and do this. That is also true. One of the coolest twirler guys. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> very cool present. Though. It was a very cool present. So while he is mixing those up, I am going to talk about the uh, Beachcomber, which is uh -huh, our other drink of the month. So the Beachcomber, um, it doesn't have quite the history as some of our other ones. Now, if you've tuned in before, you know I like good origin stories. But um, this one has been around a while. It came around the time of the Tiki Bar phase, which uh, we're pretty big Tiki Bar fans, I would say. If you, you know, we've got that pub shack. So, uh, possible inventors. We should. Remote. Yeah. Sometime from the yes, we should from the pub shack. It's true. You're right. So, Don the Beachcomber restaurant uh, could have been there, but also Victor Bergeron, who created the Trader Vicks brand. And he was a competitor of Don the Beachcomber on the East Coast. So, Don the Beachcomber was in California, and Victor Bergeron was in, well, the East Coast. I'm not exactly sure that I know we're on the East Coast, but it's going to get really loud for a minute. The cocktail appears in his 1947 bartender's guide. That would be Trader Vic. So Don the Beachcomber, the possible inventor of the drink, is uh, he was born Ernest Raymond Beaumont Gant. Quite a long name. Oh, got to stay right, in the well, frame. When you're ready for the pause, we'll do the blending. He was alive uh, from 1907 to 1989. Pausing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Very good. Uh, he did lots of things and he may have created the drink, but I wasn't really able to get an affirmative on that. We took our recipe tonight from Cointro.com, and you can find it there, and it'll be on the website eventually. So what we need is a cocktail shake, a cocktail shaker. You'd think I've done this a few times. I'm still not used to it. And we're going to put ours in a coupe glass tonight. And so we are going to use some Cointro, lovely orange liqueur. You're going to use a three quarters of an ounce of that. And Are you ready for me to interrupt? Sure, for sure. You can always interrupt, baby. Look at that. Look at that. It is a, uh, it, it's kind of, if you have, get a big enough blender and get enough ice into it, you can get it to consistency of kind of a slushy. Mm -hmm. It's very super nice. Um, and anyway, so we can have those whenever you like. We can do a taste, taste, taste now. Mm -hmm. All right. Man, I love mm -hmm. that. It's really good. So part of the reason that we're doing this one in the beachcomber is because the first day of summer was in June. And what's the first day of summer without a sunny, refreshing drink? And this absolutely fits the bill. Not everybody likes coconut, but that's okay. But without the coconut, still works fine. You could just, and if you want to uh, 
people aren't big drinkers, you can still like put half the alcohol in it. You don't need to use the full uh, can. Mm -hmm. But uh, but we often run, uh, we used to run anyway, when we threw a big party, we'd run three blenders. We would run one virgin with no alcohol in it. We would run one without coconut and we would run one traditional. Does that say three quarters of an it, ounce? It does say three quarters of an ounce. Thank you. So we're going to use three quarters of an ounce of coin trope. I should, I should, I, you know, I should make popsicles with these. You should. We're going to use um, 0.5 of an ounce of lime juice, which that's, is. That's a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I pre did my little lime juice. And then we need one and three quarters ounces of the white rum, which you saw this bottle that I'm working with here. It's crazy big. And I thought there'd be more per people at my, my grilling, but one and three quarters ounces. Which one was that? I don't know. That's all right. Do These we, little jiggers are great, but they're kind of hard to read. Three quarters. Yeah. All right. Okay. And probably my favorite thing is just we happen to buy this maraschino liqueur. It's a really lovely, lovely flavored liqueur. Yeah, but if you don't remember, we have the cherries that are made by the same folks that are absolutely fantastic. Well, that was supposed to be two dashes, but it was a four. So but, we're done there. I, I'm sorry. I distracted her with the lovely cherries. You did. They're so yummy, as you've heard me go on about before. So now we're going to shake it. Not as loud as the blender, but still has a little bit of noise to it. It is. You can be crazy. People like to see you shake, shake, shake. There it is. So you're going to shake this shaker until it's chilled, which is 45 seconds to a minute, which I know that wasn't here because we're running a little long. And now we're going to strain it into our There it is. Am I supposed to have a uh, umbrella for this? No, it's a, it actually has a a lime. It actually has a lime um, thing that I forgot to cut earlier. Do, do you want me to go cut a lime? Yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. You can make another one. Uh, I'll think I will. Okay, so we're gonna do this all over again real quick, and then we'll have a taste of this. Now, I have to say, I know I really like the boat drinks. I'm hoping that I like this drink. Um, we, we've been pretty pleased as you, if you followed us at all, you, we've been pretty pleased with the drinks that we've made so far. We're still not super fans of the sidecar. Oh, or... we don't need to say it every time. Oh, uh, we might. We're not, we're not having it again. I think that's pretty good evidence. Okay. All right. Okay. And very quickly, Anybody have any questions? Because that's a thing that we haven't done before. We haven't actually asked questions. See if anybody has questions. You can put yours on there. I can put my lime in here? Yep. Okay. okay. <clears throat> we have pre-staged your lime. Okay. <laughs> well, they want the full experience, clearly. People clearly. are always like, well, you should show us making your stuff. It's like, uh, I, I feel like it's kind of repetitive, but apparently it keeps the people amused. So um, we'll do that. What's keeping people amused is my need for bifocals. It, that has been a thing for a while, but I thought we were to discuss that. <laughs> the doctor said as long as it didn't irritate me, I could go for and, a while. But I told her I'm not holding things up for more than six feet away from her. <laughs> it's getting farther. All right. So we'll give this a shake. Oh, forgot the shot of the maraschino. Fortunately, we have backup drinks. <laughs> we do have backup drinks. Staying in the frame. And the good news is since they're both using the Bacardi liqueur, they don't really clash. So it's not like we're having a bourbon and a rum or, you know, something that's different than that. All right. That does it. Okay. And we are pouring our second beachcomber. I'm so excited to try it. Yeah, this is actually, we haven't, I mean, occasionally we do pre-test some of them, but most of them we haven't. We just kind of do them live on there so you can get our absolute first opinion. All right. Okay. So there it is. All right, so we ready? We are, and are we supposed to like squeeze it in, or we? Just... It didn't say. Uh -huh. Okay, well we'll try it both ways. Here it goes. It's interesting, and, and and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just it's kind of is it the Cointreau that? Actually, 
I think I have a little bit, honestly, I think I have a little too much maraschino liqueur. Okay. I think I, I think it would be, it said two dashes. I didn't realize that that didn't come out like my bitters dash. And so I accidentally poured it. That, that could be it because it's just got a little bit of, of something in mm -hmm. there that's not quite, but it's, but the booze, you don't taste the booze, which is good. So this is going to be a good one. I think we'll try it again with the appropriate amount of maraschino liqueur. I am going to go ahead and squeeze my lime in. Okay. Um, Who squeeze limes with the best of them? And I think that this is a serious contender. Yeah, it could be. Serious contender um, for our cocktail flights. Uh-huh. And which we're still planning on having. You maybe we might have a raffle, see if any people want to come in and, and participate in that flight. Mm-hmm. This well, is nice because all of the alcohols, yes, I was agreeing with you. Mm. Um, all of the alcohols do blend pretty nicely. And like I said, I think if I dial back the maraschino liqueur a oh, little bit. The lime in it actually makes it a little, mm -hmm. I mean, it's got a little more zing to it. Yeah. A little more refreshing. I really like that. That wasn't exactly what I meant, but okay. Well, all right then. All right. Use up the last of it. All right. Well, so now that it's July, we're going to be back on track, we hope. And we won't be doing this one quite this way again, but it's kind of fun. I hope not, but you know, we're, uh, we're it's life. like, yeah, we get busy. Everybody gets busy. Everybody gets busy. Things have been crazy. So um, there you have it. So we have the, the boat drink, which is a Tolbert team Tolbert favorite really. And honestly, I wasn't a huge Jimmy Buffett fan before Mad Farmer and I got together. But since that time, we've seen Jimmy Buffett. We named our pub shack Key Midwest, and we have shark fins on our fence. So I, we're, I have had shark fins on my fence posts since that original party. There's not been a time in the last 25 years where I haven't had shark fins. And many people thought, what was the what construction guys thought I liked to, to uh, see fish. Oh. Okay. Yeah, they were very confused. They're like, I don't, they, there's a lot of speculation why I had shark fins. And they thought it was because I was a deep sea fisherman. <laughs> so we're all in on the beach life. So. There you go. Thanks so much for watching this evening and happy cocktailing. And be safe. Drink responsibly. Thank you. Mouse, you have to end the live video. Mm. Watch this. Oh. Okay. <laughs>